Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I have it again. Yes, a lot of people are gonna say why am I reviewing it again? But this is not the same version that I did before. Today I have the 2022 Toyota Land Cruiser LC300, but not like I did the previous one. This is the ZX, the real ZX with the fully gasoline petrol engine. So today I'm going to show you this because in the previous video a lot of people like this is the diesel we want to know about the petrol more so here i have it today and this video is in fully english and hopefully in the new videos will be in fully english too let's start the full in-depth review with a little bit of brief history of the toyota land cruiser and this lc300 so the toyota land cruiser was first introduced at 1951 so it's been more than 70 years of their success with one of a car that is sold around the world every single model and it was popular all around the world especially the Middle East and Asia so Land Cruiser whenever we listen to this word a lot of people had comes very good off-roader reliable a very very big car and that is actually what it is from the start till now this car is very successful for its reliability because it's from Toyota it's major off-road capabilities because it's a off-road vehicle and Toyota is really capable of that but the competitor of these cars that are also in off-road a lot of people also like them but these are really reliable in the other side Land Rover off-road cars are not that reliable so that's why this is the number one off-road vehicle in this world and that is a very good record for Toyota and this car is really famous I get that but the most sold unit was the 2019, the LC200, that Toyota sold globally 10 million units. And that is a big achievement for Toyota and for their international global markets. Land Cruiser is very reliable, I get that, because it's Toyota. Now that word is boring. But in this generation, there's three models that actually change between designs. So there is the GR, that is the petrol, but it has a different grille and no body kit. It's like more like a desert car. And there, there is the ZX, that's this. This is the petrol, and it has the body kits, the luxury features. And then there is the Sahara. That is the diesel version, and that is like the base car. But a lot of people complained, why did I review that before? In that time, that was the only car that was available. But thanks for all of the support in that video, so that's why I'm recreating it with this car. First of all, let me show you the car's key, then I'm going to show you the car's front fascia. So the key is same as all of the Land Cruisers. You have the Land Cruiser written, you have your lock, unlock, trunk opening, and your Toyota badge. Now I'm gonna get inside the car and turn on these full LED projector setup headlights that are same on all of the different variants. So let's get inside. Put on the brake, pressing the start button. And there the car turns on. This is with the full light, with the front fog. And this is with the hazard, this is with the high beam, and this is just the low beam. Now here we come outside. So, first of all, let's come from the side till the middle. You have Land Cruiser badging inside the light, and then you have some black accent over it, and it is actually black housing. This is your hazards that's swiping, but if the hazard's off, this is your daytime running lights. You have your three projectors set up, and one is for your high beam, and two is for your low beam. You have a headlight washer that fully works and why did they give headlight washers on cars? Because considering this is off-road vehicle, if the headlight get muddy or in foggy situation, if it's fully foggy, the light can't project the power to the road. So that's why you can wash the light so the dirt can fall off or the fog can get cleared so it can put maximum performance from the light so you don't have any trouble seeing at night or in foggy days. From the headlight, if we go to the front grille, it is actually majorly different and it depends on other cars so like the zx and the sahara gets the same grill but it doesn't get the same front end so you can see if we come down from here this is your front grill so you have this full opening you have the silver you have the chrome you have the black and it's fully open for feeding air to the engine and ventilating it you have the front camera here you have the toyota badge here with the radar of the car now if we come down you have your front camera and the overall down portion is optional extra with the ZX because it only comes with this car. So this car has a full model star kit, so that's why it looks that aggressive and that much chrome accent has in it. And thanks to Avi Trading for providing this car to me. And all of the expensive cars that I review are maximum here because they import like top-notch cars. 
And this car also gets full LED fog lamps. That you can see here, it has one here and one here too. So there's two fog lamps. One is for a straight and one is a turning light. So when you turn the car, this can project to the side so it's easier to look at night. And you have six sensors at the front and it's completely designed for aerodynamics and more efficiency than the previous generation. Land Cruiser hoods are very unique from other cars because it has a big scoop at the center. First of all, there's aerodynamics, I get that. But second of all is, why did they put this? A lot of cars don't get the 360 degree camera option or it's very unreliable if it can, uh, don't work but if it sometimes works, so if you have that problem, you can still sit in the driver's side and look down here because of the scoop and that is actually really important when it comes to more off-road times but less than normal daily driving. But the LC200 got it, the LC300 got it and the front angle is pretty good for this and the diesel version, I don't mind it. Now let's come to safety. Because Toyota has their safety sensing, that is their uh, own safety system that has lane keep assist, automatic braking assist, automatic uh, lane changing assist, and then it has more features like ABS and stuff that comes to the rear. Now let me show you the car's powertrain and explain to you what is powering this car. So we're opening the hood of the car, you have to do it from the driver's side. And this car also gets keyless entry, that is an obvious feature. Mystically open the fuel tank, so there we go inside. And there's a lock here somewhere that I can never find. And the hydraulic shots are gonna get the hood up. So the Land Cruiser. Previously, we know that the Land Cruiser had V8, V8, V8. But just the Middle East used to get a V6 version because they used to custom order more than 2,000 to 3,000 vehicle for their dessert. So that's a different thing. But now, cause consumption is very high on the V8 and people are going electric. That's why they have to slowly come one step, one step down. Because they can't make a legend go to fully electric in one uh, blink. That's only Rolls Royce stuff. Toyota can't do that. They have a big, big uh, industry. So this car gets a 3.5 liter twin turbo, turbo V6. But the previous generation petrol used to get a 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8 and a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V8. But in Bangladesh, we used to get the 4.6 and the LX570 used to get the 5.7. But the, in the new generation, the Land Cruiser ZX gets the 3.5 petrol twin turbo and the Lexus LX600 gets the same engine. So it's a pretty good side when it comes to people buying it, but the, it's a bad side when it comes to the rich people. But who cares? So this is the V6 engine. You have the Toyota badge, you have the twin turbo badge, you have three on this side, three on that side because it's a V-shaped engine. This is where you pour the engine oil of the car and that's the dipstick so you can check how much fluid you have. So this is one intercooler for the turbo, this is one for the turbo because you need ventilation for turbocharged vehicles. And overall, it's very premium because it's very covered. And yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for the engine. Now let's come to the powertrain. But before that, with this engine is a 10-speed automatic transmission that is connected. And it is four-wheel drive with two differential lockers, one at the front, one at the back. So the petrol car produces 409 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque impressive from the previous generation but a lot of people are like diesel is more powerful uh, i mean it is in a way but it is not as i'm a petrol lover i'm not going biased but i'm still saying it diesel car will always have more torque but less horsepower so torque is important when it comes to the zero to 60 i get that it's faster into zero to 60 but after 60 what are you gonna do just sit there so the diesel car gets 309 horsepower and 715 newton meters of torque it's just 150 more, or just 100 more, it's okay, chill out. Now let's close the hood, it has insulation on the top as well, and I'm going to show you the car's side profile. So the car's length is 4950 millimeters, now I'm going to show you the front wheels. So the Sahara model and the GR model gets different wheels, and the ZX gets different wheels. So these are 255, 55, R21s, so it is a pretty good size when it comes to the tire and it's the same for the front and the back because there's a four wheel drive from Toyota so there's like 50-50 distribution of power. You have six piston brakes that are ventilated and you have full air suspension on this car that is multi-link at the front. And with the Model Star kit you get this side extended trim that actually looks good when it comes to the side profile because the normal car you should just get a black panel that wasn't that good. And with the Model Star kit you also get these chrome mirrors that and you can see the hazard light there and you can see the car's camera that is placed down here.
And the mirror is placed on the door at the first time in Land Cruiser history because it was always here. But for more aerodynamic efficiency, as you see the body, that's how it curves. That's why the mirror is here and you have two vortex generators for more aerodynamics. And you have chrome window trims all around and as this is a Japanese domestic model, you have rain shades. That's one of a way you can identify it. And you also have roof rails that are in black and you can actually shake the car. Now let's come to one more thing that I almost forgot. For the first time, the Land Cruiser gets a ladder frame chassis that is in this car. So this is going to improve the car not shaking that much like the previous generation, but it still does shake a little bit. As you can see, I could shake down the car from there. Now let's come to the ground clearance and the wheelbase of the car. So you also get these fixed running boards because powered ones are very unreliable and Toyota doesn't want that. So that's why there's fixed and it will always work. And the ground clearance of this car is 225 millimeters and the wheelbase of this car is 2850 millimeters. Now let's come to the fuel tank that I have to open from the inside. So here. And open it. There. And here we come back. So the diesel and the petrol both get the same capacity when it comes to the fuel tank. That is 110 liters. But as this is more or less fuel efficient, I mean sorry more fuel efficient than the V8, you can drive it around city without thinking of your car running low on gas. 17th anniversary edition. So this car, the Land Cruiser, the LC300, this variant, has been released more than 70 years. But I don't know about the Prado yet. But yeah, it is a very nice looking car. And cause this car has air suspension, you guys are gonna look at the video now, but I'm going to go and shoot the rear of the car. So the height of this car is 1,905 millimeters. Now I'm going to get inside, turn on these rear tail lights. So here we get inside. Put on the brake, pressing the start button. There the car turns on. This is the full light with the rear fog. This is with the hazard and with the reverse. Now with park. I'm going to come outside for showing you the rear tail lights and I'm really sorry I couldn't give you the air suspension video. So there's two vortex generators here that connect with the front two for, beside the mirror and then as the tail light is wrapped around you could see it all the way goes from here. That is your main tail light. You have your swiping hazards here and this is your rear fog. Rear tail lights are pretty good in my opinion. You have the ZX badge here and this is a real ZX as I know. And then you have the Land Cruiser written here, Toyota badge. And then if you come here, you have the obvious trading badge here. That's pretty much it. Now let's come to the down portion. So with the Model Star Kit, you get this aggressiveness. You have four sensors at the back with reflectors on either side. And you have a, a functional slash fake uh, exhaust tip that comes with the body kit of the car. Two slots for the number plate slot light. You have the rear windshield wiper. And then you have this really nice spoiler. And the upper star brake light is inside the windshield. Now I'm going to show you a Steel Land Cruiser practical like it was before. And in my opinion, I like the previous generation rear end than this car. So for opening the boot, you can actually swipe your leg right here. There you can see that. And the previous generation Land Cruiser had a split tailgate, but the new generation is just the full one thing. So this is a seven seater. So behind the third row, there is a little storage that you can put something, but it's not that bad. And you have some underfloor storage that you have the tools for opening the wheel. That's pretty much it. You have some hooking points on either side. If you want to hook something, you have a power outlet if you want to carry a refrigerator or something. And then this is the two buttons if you want to fold down the seats. But before that, you have to fold down the headrest from there. And then you can fold down the seats. 50-50 distribution, fully powered. And after folding the third row, you have 1,004 liters of storage. That is pretty good. And then if you want to fold the second row, but that you have to do it manually from the center seat. So here we come at the center. This is the 60. And then if we go on the other side, it is the 40. And now you have 1,940 liters. That is pretty impressive. Now let's close the boot because we are done showing you guys the interior. So there's two buttons here. One is for closing the boot, one is for closing the boot and locking the car. 
while that goes in you have two number plate slot lights and the width of this car is 1970 millimeters now let's get inside the new Land Cruiser and now let's get inside the new Land Cruiser so if you want to go inside the third row you have to fold it from here but before that let me get the third row up so you can get it up from here as well if you press those two buttons you can see that the back portion is coming up and the down portion is going to slide forward good process and then this is the 40 so I have to get this up and then fold it down from there and then it's going to get up now let's get inside the third row of this Land Cruiser so let's close the door and get inside turning on the light and then I'm going to get the 40 down if there was a strap or something it would be much easier but it is what it is and if you want to recline the seat and get into the normal position let me tell you one thing before I do anything. The previous Land Cruiser was much more comfortable in the third row than this car. Only two people can sit on this. Under thigh support is really poor. In the previous generation, the one I had, three people could sit on the rear seat and the under thigh support was pretty good. And you could just get the headrest up. So yeah, I'm actually really disappointed on this. You have one light placement here. You have AC placement on either side and you have a microphone here as well. And if you come here, these are the buttons if you want to recline and get the seat up. And you have one charging socket here, a USB-C. And, the and then you can get the seat straight up or get it reclined from here, fully powered. And now I'm going to come outside. So the seat is like this, but I could just get that. Like, you know what? Never mind. I'm just going to climb over it. There, I get my legs out and here I jump out. Let's get the center portion up, but before that I'm going to show you how you fold down the seats from the center row. So I have to fold this down a bit. And then there's two buttons. You have this button for right and this button for left. And you can see the seat is going down and the center portion actually goes under it. So it takes more room, but less uncomfortability. And now let me show you the second row. Getting inside, the 40 is up. Turning on the light real quick. Getting my seat in the right position, turning that light off. And then this is the 60. For getting that in position, I have to get it here and then push behind. As this is a brand new car, that's why everything's wrapped and stuff. But knee room is more than enough. Headroom's pretty good and it is very comfortable. Well, and you can get the center armors down, feet high in the packet, but as it's a brand new car, that's why it's very hard. So you have, if you press this button, you have two cup holders. And this is just a very soft spot to keep your hand. And you have isofix anchor points on both of the rear seats. And it is pretty comfortable sitting inside. Now let's come to the center place. So you have two AC vents that is with the closer and opener. This is for the wind speed. This is for the temperature of either side, auto off, where you want the air. And ventilated at heated seats for the back. That's nice. And then you have the volumes and the two charging slockets for either side. And these are all USB Cs because this car is made in the T and G platform. And then there is a power socket there, an HDMI and the volumes for either side for the rear infotainment systems. It's very simple. You can connect DVD or HDMI and there's nothing else. You can just see what songs playing at the front. And you can actually open this cooler box from the back as well. And as this is a refrigerator on the ZX, you can put some drinks there. And now I'm going to come on the door because we are pretty much done. So fully leather wrap, this is the door handle, this is for unlocking and uh, locking manually. You have your JBL twitters, you have the wooden treatment with the window opener. Grab handle here, full leather, full leather. You have bottle holder, speaker and you have your side lights. Now I'm going to get inside the front. Software close, not yet, in future. So first let's start with the dash. You have your Twitters here, then you have your SRS airbag with this dash, you have your AC vent here, lockable glove box with a lot of storage. And then if we come to the seats, full seats are powerly adjustable for both of the sides and it is heated and ventilated too. You have a center sunroof, but the blind is manual, but if you just open it, the blind's going to open it with it. 
right there and for opening the sunroof to get this down I can open it from right there and then you can see the opening is pretty good not that bad so now let's close the sunroof it comes back and you can get it up and down and the blind is manually adjustable then you have vanity mirrors on either side that are actually very good and you have a bright light and a good mirror the size of the mirror is good. Now let's come to the center storage cubby. So you can open it from here and my side and you have the storage for candies and this is a full refrigerator under it. Putting that back in and you can actually slide this from either side and this opens from here as well. Nice. Two cup holders here. There's a phone holder here and if you press this button there is a 12 volt socket, a USB and another a USB-C, a USB and a SIM slot here. And this is the gear knob, so it's park. This is reverse, and you have the reversing camera with the 360 and it has adaptive guidelines. This is for neutral drive, and this is for manual shift. And then you have some buttons here, like brake hold, your parking brake, high, low, and low four. You have your differential lockers, and this is for getting a better turning radius. And these are some off-road modes. This is for the driving mode, and this is a CDN, and you can see JBL branding right there. Now I'm going to show you the car's infotainment system. Foot on the brake, pressing the start button, and now I'm going to show you this car's infotainment system that is 12.5 inches. It has a nice animation, Toyota written, and the logo, and it's the same infotainment all of the grades. But it does take, take some time loading. So if you go to menu, these are the shortcut buttons. ETC card is not inserted. So this is menu. You have setup information. This is for T-Connect apps, but it doesn't work in Bangladesh. This is phone, TV for controlling the rear infotainments, audio, and destination means map. If you want to look at the side display, you can control it from here. Like you can have the climate control, the temperatures, and the wind speed, and where you want the air, front, and you can also see the rear. It's here. And these are for the ventilated and heated seats that you can control from here as well. And then this is for audio, this is for consumption, the trip information of the car. This is the car's overall drive train. So which driving mode you are in. So this is eco, this is comfort, this is normal, this is sport, this is sport plus, and this is custom. I'm going to leave it to normal as it was. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You could see both of the differentials and the four-wheel drive system and the engine and the transmission work. And this is for the cameras of the car. And then you can see the bird's eye view of the car and the off-road view of the car as well. So you can look at the wheels. I mean, under the wheels, like when you're driving and stuff. So there we're done with the cameras and here we come back. And then over here, you can see the whole cars inside and stuff. And that's pretty much it for the infotainment. As you can look down here, you have some shortcut buttons for the track, this is for the TC, home, audio, menu, map, and this is for your powertrain, and this is for the volume. That's pretty much it. You have two AC vents here. This is the light to turn, this is the button to turn on the hazards. You have the heated and ventilated seats and the heated front windshield and the rear windshield. This is for the climate control for that side. This is the wind speed, this is for my side. Auto and off and steering heater, seat heater and seat ventilation. If you go up, this is your rear view mirror that's auto dimmed. You have some lights here for the lights for the front and the back. This is for opening the sunroof, emergency SOS emergency, and that's pretty much it. Now let's come to the steering. The steering is same for the all of the models except the GR. It is fully leather strapped, power lead tilt and telescopic. And you have buttons here to control this screen. You have buttons here for the safety systems of the car. Now I'm going to show you the car's instrument cluster. Put on the brake, pressing the start button and there it turns on. And then you have a nice animation at the center. So this is your speedo, the top speed is 180 km per hour. And this is your fuel gauge, this is synced with the lights on. And this is the RPM, that's the major difference with the petrol and the diesel because the red line is 6,000 instead of 5,000. And this is for the engine temperature. ETC card is not inserted. And then this full center screen is controllable with the buttons here. So first of all, if we go on menu, Well, if you go on menu, you have your digital speed, you have your eco meter, and you have your fuel consumption, so your trip information. 
then you have driving support you have audio this is for your all of the systems like the safety systems on or off it's just going to give you a setup right there and this is for settings this is for the brightness of the instrument cluster this is for lane departure assist on and off automatic brake brake assist on and off and this is for blind spot monitoring off, on and off and when you turn it on you can see it illuminates right there then it's parking sensor off and on this is the rear cross traffic alert and the rear automatic braking assist and heads up display off and on this the speed limit monitor and the cruise control vehicle settings instrument cluster settings and this is the warnings as this is a brand new car there's no warnings and when you change the driving mode it does change a bit so this is eco comfort normal sport sport plus custom so i'm going to leave it on sport plus for the meantime and these controls are fully for safety these are for the screen you have your hazards and high beam here and you have your windshield wiper controls on the other side and when you turn it off it just slowly disappears put on the brake pressing the start button and there it slowly turns on and the light goes down and up and does a nice animation and then slowly the heads up display turn on as you can see right there I'm going to turn the light off so you can see it a little nicer. So you have the kilometer, you have the outside temperature, and you have the gear. But after some time, you have the RPM that's down there. I want to change the driving mode. ETC card is not inserted. Plus. You can actually see when it's redlining, when it's in 1000 RPM. And if you go in manual mode, you can see which gear you're on in as well. Now, that's going to be pretty much it. And when you turn it off, it just slowly disappears. First of all, you have the vent for defogging the windows. Then you have your AC vent with the closer and DTC opener. ETC card is not inserted. Then you have for the button for opening the boot and closing the boot from the inside. This is for auto headlights. This is for your cross traffic alert off and on, track control, and this is something that's only used in Japan. This is for opening the hood and opening the fuel tank, death pedal, brake pedal, and gas pedal. And if you come to the doors, you have Land Cruiser written here. You have the seat controls that are fully powered and it's actually very comfortable to sit inside the seats. Now let's come to the door. Fully leather strapped on the top. Then you have your door hand. And then you have three memory seats. This is for controlling the exterior mirrors. This is for folding and unfolding. Or you can just keep it in auto. This is for lock, unlock, mirror lockers and window openers. And it is one touch. And when you open it, you can see it is double glazed for improving the sound noise cancellation of the car. Getting that up, you have this grab handle, full wooden treatment, you have some spot holders here, you have a light there so you can see at night and then you have a speaker here and that's pretty much it. Turning the car off and here I exit because I'm done with the review. So I know it was a very short review and because there's no sunlight I couldn't show a lot of things but as you guys asked for the petrol version I did it. I know a lot of people are going to be like why but still I did it because you guys wanted it. So if you need this car, you can contact with Avi Trading or any other luxury cars. Until then, see you next time and my social media accounts are going to be at the description.